And if you don't know what the ATT is, the ATT won't let me be, let me be me, so let me see. And they try to shut me down on MTV and because it feels so empty without me. Mm-hmm. That's basically what it is summed up in a nutshell. Yeah. The other can, we, can we breadcrumb so, that? I'm dying. We, Anyways, continue. No. Go for it. Breadcrumb. Okay. All right. Before you go. Ah! I'm, I'm but most of the time, if you're just on a motorcycle, you're probably going to die. Boom. Let's, but be, if you, let's if, be honest. If, Joe... Schmo. Joe Schmo. But I don't run to work, head. dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's called mm. Red Dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, original. you know, you know who else hasn't ratified the ATT? Uh, For you to tell me that I can't sexually yeah. harass gonna, my employees. I'm gonna. Yeah. I walked into his office and he exposed himself to me. Right. Yeah, oh no, we're filming right now. <clears throat> oh, good morning. Hey there. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to the Two Way Procast. Today is a day of all days in which a couple of boys are going to not be gay. And we're going to watch a video. No one's going to let it play. And Ooh. we are going to react to it, and you can see what we say. So. So I'll uh, I'll lead the charge in this real quick. I, just I don't know why we're doing the, the reaction. Baseline. Why are we Why are we doing? You just wanted to get a good reaction. Yeah, out of I this figured to we see. could just watch it. Yeah, right? we're all so we're all gonna watch it together. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. I'm the it only yet. one who's seen it. Nolan has been the only one who's actually witnessed this event, and you're. We're all gonna watch it together. We're gonna come to some conclusions. I'm very excited amongst that each other. Fidel Castro's son is clearly in the freeze frame of this, the beginning of this. So, so, so uh, <laughs> that's an unarguable thing. Also, I don't care what anyone says. Indeed. What? Um, Justin Trudeau. That's is, not Justin Trudeau. <laughs> that is the. Uh, I mean, that looks like Justin Trudeau. It does. Oh, okay. kind, hard, it kind of does. Yeah. A little okay. Bit. Well, then that's a side topic. But yeah. that's Justin the Trudeau L. Is, that's the El Presidente of. Uh, n- uh, n- n- N-H-E-R. God damn it. Uh, anyways, so just let me start this. Shut the fuck up, both of you. Uh, we are going to watch, uh, gonna watch uh, Dudley Brown at the UN basically tell them to go eat rocks. Um, I watched it, and I think it's a really good discussion piece. I think he spoke really well, and I think you guys will get pretty fired up about it. And Good. I think it'll be fun just kind of talk about it and the stance. Well, I'll let you guys, I'll let you okay. guys come to your own mm. things about it. But... First off, welcome to the 2A Procast, everyone. This is a place for all things chicanery and debauchery. <laughs> we have uh, Mad Minute Tacticians right here, Tic Tac himself, the Jacob he's, Dines. He's very angry. 60 seconds at a time, he's very angry. Just at one minute at a time, he is just yeah. furious. He's furious. I don't think you guys know what the Mad are you mad is. In oh, this, are you mad in this particular minute? No. Oh, exactly we've got... Are you are you mad in this particular moment? No, I'm like super happy. Okay, I am really excited to watch this Justin Trudeau video. Though. Okay, <laughs> can we do an entire thing about how Justin Trudeau? That is for is sure Justin Fidel Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, are you tracking this whole thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like unorganized. Why was Justin Trudeau's mother hanging out with Fidel Castro right. and by why himself? Why does he look exactly like Fidel Castro? You can overlay 30. the photos and they look exactly. <laughs> They're dead on. It's a hundred. Are you are you 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 haven't come into contact with this yet, have you? No, he hasn't. Unarguable. No, Justin Trudeau is Fidel Castro's illegitimate love child. Well. <laughs> Without it's, doubt. It's arguable, it's but arguable. without a doubt. It's not arguable. I want to see the fucking DNA test. It's I don't doubt, like, I just doubt Trudeau's the... mom yeah. went to Cuba. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. then got knocked up by Fidel Castro. Yeah, dude, she 100%. was kind of banging, dude. 100%. Okay, 100%. And then had Justin Trudeau. How yes. do you explain the... He doesn't com- look like his dad. He what? looks like his dad. Yeah, mm-hmm. Fidel's an alpha. <laughs> his son's a beta. Explain yeah. that. Well, his son's not a beta. His son plays it's a beta. Fidel Castro. His son, be Fidel Castro in Canada. His son is Look, they, in 2022, <laughs> they, they took away your ability. Yeah. Canada in 2022 said no more private owned uh, or private sale pistol sales. And then in 2024, they are arresting people for free speech violations on social media. Don't forget in 2020, they were running people over with uh, horses. <laughs> trying to get people out of hospitals. Oh, Anyways, that's right. Um, All right. Yeah, our, so, two-way procast, what do we do here? We uh, talk about Schilling. everything Second Amendment related. Shilling. <laughs> Shilling, time for our shill. Oh, yeah. Um, Just do it fast. Sign up for two-way nah. pro. Change your life. <laughs> Ready for a shill? Um, no, man. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Hell, yeah. That get, would in be two-way pro, man. get in the There's two-way a, pro, man. Get in the two-way pro server. Get in the, uh, yeah, get the Discord server. That's not a shill. Like, get in, the, get in the Discord server. The Discord is uh, an amazing place. I've been popping in there, like, once a day. 
and uh, just dropping a troll bomb and then leaving. Um, God, I used to be in there all the man. time, and then I neglected it for a while, and I'm kind of working my way back in day by day. Like a father who kind of like left for the golden years of the yeah, childhood. Yeah, and I just drop I off a little present attacked. once a day. It's just a little present. <laughs> <laughs> I, just kinda, kinda, I come I come along for like the graduations now. Yeah. And like when something oh. big happens in there, yeah. I'll, I'll be in there. But I'm, I'm working my way back in there. You're all, sure. oh, a talent agent hit you up? <laughs> I, uh, I'm really interested in everything you got going on now. <laughs> Um, I love you, Mace. <laughs> <laughs> I just have, you know, like AI trigger keywords for me. So if I hear, you know, somebody say T-Rex arms, I can like pop in there and say gay. If I hear somebody say like Tacticon, I could Is pop in there and video? say super gay. Super gay. So <laughs> we can't let it go. Every video, every video starts with like, I'm fucking T-Rex. I know. I, I bleep it out every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do the intro. We have had, just send some. We have had slide. some. We've had some really good success uh, with uh, students in the Two A Pro course. The link will be down in the description for the Two A Pro course. It's pretty amazing. It's like a business course. You start uh, a complete business in the Second Amendment. Both uh, we we do it a couple of different ways, man. Like we show you how to market and build a brand and source your supplies and your materials and how to build products. And it's really fucking cool. And if you don't have any money to do any of that, we allow you to leverage Tacticon's inventory and our entire team here at Tacticon will help you. And uh, you could drop ship the goods if you'd like. And we deliver a fully built website to you that you can start adding your own products to or Tacticon's products to. And we show you how to do the whole thing. It's like really fucking amazing. And people are making a lot of money and they're doing it. And if you don't believe me, just get in there and ask them. If they tell you that I'm lying, then you have seven days to get a refund. Anyway, okay, that'll do that. All right, we are good and back on to the show. And if you want to support Use. the channel, buy our sweet clothing. Buy our sweet or clothing. Anything I'm else wearing this one right now. Spilling the tea since 1773. It's pretty late. So support the show. Don't be a hoe. Let's go. <laughs> nice. And three, two, one, let's go. Just kidding. All right, we're going to restart. And uh, three, two, one, let's go. Thank you, Mr. President. Currently, the U.S. is home to more than 500 million civilian-owned firearms. 10% of the National Association for Gun Rights. Thank you, Mr. President. Currently, the U.S. is home to more than 500 million civilian-owned firearms, 10% of which could be defined as assault rifles. How does the UNATT deal with a nation with not only so many small arms, but whose very foundation and national identity is wrapped around armed defiance? It's an inherent challenge to the state monopoly on small arms. Now, Mexico is trying a new method. They are suing U.S. small arms manufacturers in U.S. court, attempting to dodge the corruption and cartel issues that drive Mexico's rampant violence. This will, of course, fail. North Korea and China have a more traditional approach to citizen disagreement. We all know what that looks like. What Mexico, China, and many others here don't understand is that the world has changed. The internet has made so much of it obsolete. We are in the age of free men with arms, men who have decided that they will have no masters. And those men are circumventing your controls including anything the UN may implement. The state monopoly on the tools of liberty is now over. Using plans downloaded on the internet, people are printing firearms in their homes and using them as a rudder to chart the course against oppression and giving teeth to their discontent. This is a very good reason that every successful dictator in the 20th century went out of their way to disarm citizens before enforcing the tyranny that would get them shot. But those days are over. You laugh, um, but it's true. I am not concerned with the praise or good opinions of dollar store dictators or bureaucrats. I'm only really now speaking to the people of the world, not just the CSP. The simple fact is that your government cannot keep you safe. It is neither their desire nor their objective. They seek only your obedience and subservience. They do not disarm you to keep you safe from yourself. They disarm you because they fear how you will react when they step out of line. They are either in bed with the criminals who oppress you or are the very criminals that dole out the oppression. Good men of the world, if you have arms, don't give them up, no matter what people here might say. Jealously protect and defend your ability to resist. 
They will be what stands between you and your self-determination. To those who have no arms, shake your system in order to secure them. Your arms can be the torch to light the path toward a better world, toward a future of your own making. Thank you. I thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you. What, what, what should I say? I mean, it's a free world. As a proof, you can speak, and this is clear. I was smiling, not laughing, because given my physical position, I saw, I could see how many eyebrows you raised. In God. How many eyebrows you raised? Made yeah. me smile. Yeah. Maybe it's because... Okay, can so that talk, was it. Can we talk was, about how absolutely fucking gangster Dudley Brown was? Yeah, that was an nice yeah. speech. First of all, Short you're the fucking, the you are the man, Dudley Do, right? Jesus, that is fantastic. What a great response. That is everything that is so jumbled inside of my head said so eloquently. You know it what I mean? Like eloquent. everything yeah. that I yeah. believe that was just, it was, uh, it was written and then uh, orated incredibly and yeah it's gonna raise eyebrows <laughs> how many eyebrows you raised in the room yeah because everybody in that fucking room are leaders of yeah different nations and that don't allow people to carry arms for the exact reason that he was talking about because that is he literally you, just called uh, everybody in that room a criminal yes yeah and that's why he's yeah. raising fucking eyebrows gangster. because everybody in the room's going oh shit that's what we're doing. There's there's a mm. fundamental difference in male like archetype, right? And we always talk about like beta male versus alpha male, right? But there is uh, soft men climb easy ladders. Everyone in that room climbed an easy ladder. It's an educational ladder, yeah. and it's not to say that like you know getting into Harvard, going through Harvard, like it's a very difficult thing to do. I I, I have no interest in pursuing that. You know, it's a it's a hard ladder for me. But no, no, listen, hey, wait. If, it's not as hard of a ladder as Joe, arming myself and defending myself against my government. I think this much is a harder ladder. If I, Joe Biden can graduate yeah. Ivy League college, yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, so that entire, ah, that in, ah, but that's shit. That is nepotism. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. all that's that shit. That, in, that entire room is full of soft men that climbed soft ladders. Yeah. And so like for them to, for when you propose an idea to them, that's like, Hey, you have to draw a line for yourself. You have to defend your belief system to the death. It's yeah. just so mind blowing that they can't wrap their, it's comical. Uh, they can't wrap their head around it. It is not. So it is. I love it is difficult right now. <laughs> pickles are great. <laughs> so it is not easy to get into an Ivy League, obviously, mm -hmm. right? College, but it's a soft college ladder. can be difficult. College can be complicated, but it is. Let me reword that. It takes here's what, here's what I'm trying ladder. to say. It is. It is not simple, but it is easy. Yeah. Those two things mean yeah. different things. Yes. Right? Yes. It is not simple. It is complicated. You have to be smart. You have to go through very difficult right. classes to do to 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 get through the degrees that the men in that room have. Yeah, they've wasted but a lot of time. But it's easy. Yeah. It's easy look work. At, look there, at medical school now. You you sit at a desk and I can I can say this with all certainty. I haven't gone to Ivy League, but I went to UC Davis. And I am not the sharpest tool in the shed. All I did was just sit down and like do the fucking work and some of it's mm. very complicated but mm. it, there was never a time where i was like this is just so hard but someone like sitting in a class a for six hours a day is just yeah. so hard it's someone not fucking gave hard. you a ladder to yeah, define yourself by your own world and to be self-determined as a person yeah. you are building your own fucking ladder those guys climbed a ladder that was already established they followed the rules they don't make any of their own decisions and yet somehow their leadership class across the planet are people that are unable to like build their own ladders. Yeah. They don't make their own decisions to so just go with whatever the flow is. And that's the destruction of all freedom. Yeah. So I have that. What that was, was the, uh, it was the UN address on eight on, on the arms ATT. in the ATT. And if you don't know what the ATT is, the ATT won't let me be, let me be me. So let me see. And they try to shut me down on MTV and cause it feels so empty without me. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is summed up in a nutshell. Yeah. The other things that it, talks about is the ATT is the, uh, it's like an international, it's international gun, <laughs> cuckery. G gun cuckery. <laughs> it's international gun regulation yeah. is really what it is. If, if but like in a nutshell, under the guise of, of, of countries allowing illegal export of uh, illegal arms deals, right? right. That's they, they, they've established the ATT to basically say, Hey, we don't want the wrong weapons 
crossing borders from this country into that country, getting into the wrong hands. So if we establish this international regulation where we can regulate firearms globally, then we can prevent the wrong munitions from entering the wrong countries into the wrong Law hands. Laws. Now, that is – that is the premise of okay, the we ATT. We have so much to say right now. That is, I know, we do, but that, that's, that's the premise of the ATT. But they're the ones doing it. So, so, so <clears throat> well, just give me one second. Yep, continue. My opinions on the ATT. The reason why this is just total fuckery. I don't care about the rest of the fucking world. They can do whatever the fuck they want. The rest of the world can have the ATT. If I they, care. Uh, I'm I'm just let's let, there is a starting point. Of course I care. I think that I, I think the I world should be fucking armed and protect themselves from their tyrannical governments. But when it comes to the United States, there's a couple reasons why we don't don't need the ATT. First of all, the 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 people who are going to try to prevent us from owning firearms, which are the ones that are currently in the United States trying to prevent us from owning firearms in the United States, are going to use international regulation. They're going to use this treaty as a uh, kind of a, a club over our head, so to speak, so that they can say, hey, we would be violating this treaty that the United States entered if we don't do X, Y, and Z, and we don't start establishing more regulation for firearms. That's first of all. And there's already enough regulation in the United States as it is. Second reason why we don't need the fucking ATT is because we already have what's called ITAR. It's the International Trade and Arms Regulation, I think is what it stands for. International Trade of Arms Regulation. Anyway, it's called Close fucking enough. ITAR, and it prevents people from exporting armament. It, it prevents me from taking a gun or a um, uh, ammunition and exporting it to another country. It actually, we here have got to be in compliance with ITAR, um, even producing level four body armor. Level four body armor, because we manufacture it here, um, not in China, you fuckheads out there. On social media, who think we manufacture a level four in China? Anyway, we we manufacture it here in our facility. To manufacture level four, we have to be ITAR compliant because they don't want us exporting level four armor throughout the entire world. Because level four armor is what typically our military uses, and it stops a whole lot of rounds. So we have to be in compliance with that. I have had to go through a lot. I ha I've had to jump through hoops before, and I actually got. Um, it was when your brother was working here. We got a visit from the FBI, uh, from the um, customs the, the the customs division of the mm -hmm. FBI, because we had sold some optics to some guy who then sold it to some international dude. Wasn't it who some then, Russian guy? Yes. Yeah. He. We Remember sold this. our optics to a guy who sent it overseas. It ended up in some arms dealer's hands. That arms dealer got caught with our optics and a bunch of fucking guns. And then it got all traced back to us. But, Ours has to go third party. But, DOD contracts yes. are first party. <laughs> I was like, yeah, listen, dude, that, that is I sold that it I to make. some dude in like Virginia. And that guy wasn't me. <laughs> that guy went and sold it to somebody else. But I had to provide a paper trail right. for that. Because they were saying that we violated ITAR because our shit was outside the United States. So it doesn't matter what it is. Even scopes, optics, things like that are subject to ITAR in some capacity. Defense-related items. I had $100,000 worth of iron sights seized that I still have yet to recover. They're iron sights because the DDTC uh, and the CBP, the Customs and Border Patrol, um, deemed them – uh, munitions of some sort. And I No, you know what they the did? The burden of proof is on me. I'm guilty until proven innocent. They said perfect. We don't have to buy CAC sites. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So, can we, we can we breadcrumb so, that? I'm dying. We will breadcrumb it. I know. I know I'm you're dying. dying. I know you're dying. I just want everybody to understand that 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 the ATT, which is the arms trade testicles. <laughs> sure, testicles. It is the uh arms, arms trade. Arms trade treaty? Treatise? Yes, yes, Sounds. treaty. It is the arms trade treaty is basically a a giant agenda to prevent people from owning firearms worldwide. And the United States does not need that. One, because we have the Second Amendment. The ATT would shit all over our constitutional rights. And we already have our own policies and procedures in place to prevent weapons from getting into the wrong fucking hands. It's heavily regulated already. We don't need a part of that. And that is the reason why in 2018, fucking Trump said, not or 19, I think it was, Trump it was 2019. Trump refused to ratify that treaty. Hmm. Did you know that? No. The but United States. Biden didn't. 
Did he not? Biden did not ratify it. Some, he did. He did something like I don't first agenda f- items was something where the oh maybe he did. It allowed he the may UN have, to He may have in. ratified it, but Trump is campaigning right now on undoing it. He said at the mm-hmm. last NRA, um, the last NRA rally that Trump was at, he said he is going to undo what Obama initially did in 2014 with the ATT. Mm-hmm. Obama was the one that hopped on board on that shit back in 2014. That tracks. Trump was asked to ratify it. Yeah, told him to fuck so off. Many reasons. Trump was told him ra- asked to ratify it, told him to fuck off, said he would not participate in that for all the reasons that I just talked about for the last, like, fucking 10 minutes. And then um, in 20 – I forget what year. I think uh, Biden took it to the next level. But I think the reason why Biden couldn't get it ratified is because it has to be ratified in the U.S. Senate. Now, Trump – hi, Jake from the future here, and I'm sorry to interrupt the entire podcast, but I need to give you correct information. And I have a bunch of information bumbling around inside of my head during the podcast. I didn't write it down. And with ADHD, it makes things incredibly difficult. So we have a Senate majority of – there is a Senate majority of 51 representatives of the Senate inside of the Democratic Party. And we have a House majority of 220 representatives – for the re- in favor of the Republican Party. Now, as far as the treaty goes, this ATT that we've been talking about, in order to ratify what Obama signed in in 2014, they would need a two-thirds Senate majority vote, which is probably the reason why Biden hasn't done it. That is really all I wanted to tell you, is that, yes, in fact, there is a Senate majority for the Democrats, but they can't ratify it without a two-thirds majority vote which is, in fact, why it hasn't been ratified. Now, back to your regular programming. Cannot ratify. Right. The Senate has to ratify. Um, Trump said he would not support it, but I don't think, yeah, Biden doesn't have the Senate. Does the executive have the ability to veto an international treaty? I like it seems like he, don't. the executive negotiates, Senate approves, but I don't know. I don't think that that goes through a veto process, like a new piece of legislation. I don't think it does either. I I'm do not, know. I'm not, I'm not I know dude, that I, I do don't. know that the U.S. Senate would have to ratify the treaty. Yeah. And I do know that Biden does not have the U.S. Senate on his side. He's got the House, right? Right. <laughs> He's got the House, but he doesn't have the Senate right now. That sounds. I I, I've I've got to look it up. I'll 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 find the answer for you guys. I'm sure they're out there googling. But for for those listening, I'm right I'm pretty sh- what. Do they not have both right now? No, nope, fuck no. Nope. He's down on one? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he doesn't have the Senate. I Like, I'm 99% sure I, he doesn't I have the Senate. I, th- I think he's, I I think he's like, got the House of Representatives know. right now. But um, uh, who is majority Senate? Let's just look it up right now. Oh, my God. I want a bread come. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, it's not giving me the answer that I want. I will give it to you. Go ahead. You you guys speak. I need Go, 30 seconds because I know you're going to run. I'm going to run. <laughs> you're going to run. First off, laws made out of the fear, laws made out of fear in general. Like, oh, we need to protect you. We have to, we have to stop this. It's always to strip away the rights of citizens. Furthermore, it's the same thing like um, commonplace, right? Yeah. Um, or... Is that what it's called? Not commonplace, but common, common use. use. Yep. Thank you. Uh, if if something like this goes through, and all the other nations go, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll we'll lock down on our guns, every single one of them, and then the U.S. gets to go. Look, everybody yep. else did it. It's normal. Yep. Anyways, continue. Yep. Go for it. Okay. All right. Before you go, no! I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna correct. I'm gonna correct myself. <laughs> The Senate, the majority Senate is held by the Democrats with, with 51 seats. I was yeah, fucking, I was wrong. And the House of Reps, though, has the Republican, Slightly Republican has the Republican majority. By like five, right? No, uh, nine, but close. Because oh, okay. yeah. right. the Senate, the Senate I always was, get, uh, who's West Virginia Senator? Um, oh, yeah, he has the, the majority leader for the Senate is Schumer. Uh, no, 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 no. There's a, there's a, oh, man, I wish I could remember his name. During COVID, he was one of the most influential senators in the country because he kept making, he kept breaking from the Democrats on stuff. And he was like the one oh, deciding Oh, yeah, though. I know who you're talking about. Because they, they, there was a big push for I know him to run him for president, right. and he was like, no. I, I know who you're talking about, yeah. And I should have already known that. I already know that the Senate majority leader is Schumer, and Schumer's a fucking Democrat, so I should have put those two things together. Okay. Okay, breadcrumbs. <laughs> All right. Okay. The UN, ITARS, ATT, any, any um, even the U.S. government, in, 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 when they're talking about, like, firearms within the U.S. or export into, like, Mexico and South America and Canada. And, like, there's always these complaints about the U.S., like, firearms industry arming other people, right? Let's just say that me and Nolan sell drugs. 
right? And we own four. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> we own these like four city blocks, right? And then you come in and you want to sell drugs in one of our city blocks. If you, if you look at all government as uh, some level of criminal organization, then all of a sudden things like ATT and our towers and all that stuff makes sense. Like, why is it that we're willing to leave $8 billion worth of helicopters, machine guns, hand grenades, rocket launchers, body armor, night vision? We leave all that stuff in Afghanistan, no issues. We can arm rebel groups around the world. Like, how many different times have we armed an extremist group somewhere and it turned around and they were shooting back at Americans? $37 American million dollars stuff. a week? Right. It's just, dude. It's like seven. It's like seventy something, like yeah. million dollars a week gets delivered to the to the Taliban something. cold Anyways. heart cash. It's totally insane. But so my my breadcrumb point was just this is another great example where it really highlights the fact that any level of government is in its heart some criminal organization because it's not they're 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 not they're not pushing that they're worried about bad actors getting firearms because they themselves are the ones arming the bad actors, right? Right. The only concern is they don't want competition. And who is being armed? They Only want to Raytheon be the, yeah. can sell to exactly. them. <laughs> because, right. the, because all of those people that climbed a soft ladder that sit in that room, they all have an overseer. They all have someone who is buying their beach houses, who paid for them to get through these programs, who got, got them the seat that they sit in, because all of those seats are for sale. They have an overlord that they have to be square with. And the, the defense contractors don't want anyone competing in their area. So they establish international communes and, and the UN and you, you, the American firearms laws. And I genuinely believe that the attempt of all of that stuff, why is it that you can't sell level four plates somewhere, but the U.S. government can just helicopter cash and machine guns anywhere that they want to? And it's never we never address the fact that like when you hear about some um, terrorist group somewhere being armed with American stuff, like we go into Afghanistan and we arm the Taliban. We never address the fact that it's not like Daniel Defense executives got on a plane and went over there and delivered firearms. We do all of that stuff through gray water, back channel, international arms dealers. So our own military violates all of these, all of this stuff all the time. There's no issues with it. The only intent that they have, it has nothing to do with, with protecting anybody or making sure that bad people don't get guns. It's just control. It's it's just nothing more than control. oh it always they're is. the only ones that get to decide who has guns, and that's it. There cannot be competition in the marketplace, and it's just a big level global version of we sell drugs and you don't get to do it here. The yes, yeah, pretty that's much all it yeah. is. the the moment that's I, breadcrumb complete. Right the the moment that I fully realized that no laws are ever made for like really good reasons ever. No, that's and why that, they're always named and that the, the opposite of what they do. Right, and that um, the government is just a sold out entity. The Inflation is, Reduction Act is when exploded I, the economy. Is when I figured out and found out when jaywalking laws came into place because the Ford Motor Company was getting terrible backlash because back before there were motor cars, people would just walk in the streets. Yep. But now there was this fucking metal vehicle yep. flying down the roads <laughs> and people were getting and killed. And it made Ford look bad. Yeah, it made Ford yeah. look bad. People yeah. were boy boycotting the Ford Motor Company because people were getting run yeah. over by cars. And Ford yeah. had bought just so, enough political seats. So Ford paid money, got the political seats, and they pushed for yeah. jaywalking laws. So people don't. a lot of people don't know nowadays, jay was a derogatory term back in the day. Wait, to be to, a jay? To be a jay. That was a derogatory term. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, so... Jaywalking was it? You don't want to be a Jay. Don't like, be a Jay. Uh, what's that? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll look up exactly what You're a, jackass. a Jay was. Don't jackass walk. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's, you know the Jaywalking thing is interesting. I, I feel like that's one of the first. I've always made the argument that. Uh, so it'd be like if we were trying to prevent somebody from doing something that like like that now, it would be like don't be like a. Don't be gay. Don't be a fag walker. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't, 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 don't be a fag walker. Don't, fag walk. don't, fag, walk. don't fag walk. Don't fag walk. <laughs> don't fag walk. <laughs> like, go fag walking all over the place. This That's actually really interesting, though, that um, I and didn't know that jaywalking started by that long ago. Yeah. I thought that seatbelt laws were the first violation of your basic common sense. Mm -mm. So, if you want to kill yourself not wearing a seatbelt, you're not a threat to other people. Uh, uh, or am I, I going to shoot myself through the windshield into your car and kill you? Right. No. Uh, it's described right. as a person who's inexperienced, unsophisticated, or foolish. Is a J. Is a J. What a J. Yeah. You're real Jay. You're real Jay. Yeah. I'm gonna start calling everybody Jays. Yeah. You're Jay. How long Foolish, if you had the two A community? Fucking, you're a retard. If the if basically the, if the two A community, the conservative side of the house, the people that uh, just haven't completely lost their minds over the last four years, if we all start using the term Jay, Jay. how fast does that get blacklisted in some way? Oh, so fast. It'll be the yeah. new fag, yeah. like right away. It'd be the new fag for sure. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. That it really is, especially to hear that about. For well, you know, the other thing about seatbelts too is. 
Look, once you have like socialized health, everybody has to have health care, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody. They're making you pay for it. It's fucking complete socialized medicine. We can all agree on that. It's total bullshit. You know, Obamacare where the government would like essentially sue you if you didn't have it's health a, insurance. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Wild. So if you have Why to have that happen? if you have to have health insurance, listen, if I have to have health health insurance, if I have to. Have to. Then you're not allowed to tell me whether or not I need to wear a seatbelt. Right. No, that's exactly now, what they before, can do. They forced you to before, be on their plan, and now you have to follow their plan. <laughs> before, it's not their the, – the crazy thing is about this shit, dude. This is the this is the wild thing about it. Everybody thinks that, like, government is fucking subsidizing our health care. You know who subsidizes the health care? You. It's us. Yeah, it's the fucking it's young us. men and women. Yeah. Who are healthy? That you're, don't need health insurance. You're working your ass off to pay for these old ass people who eat twelve hundred dollars a month years. for fucking health insurance. Their That's, finger is in your pie. 30, 36 cans of Coca Cola. I would a day. almost be like, what's wrong I would be almost halfway okay if the government stepped forward and said, "Hey, so we're socializing health care. We're socializing health care and free health care for everyone." Look, I'm not gonna like that because I don't think that should be a thing either. But what am how? I don't need to pay. Okay. I'm fucking. not responsible for your life decisions go, across the board. Go for it, across guys. The board. <laughs> go pay for my fucking health. I don't give a you That is not what happened. Up, what they said fault. is everybody has to have it, and we're going to tax the rich in health purposes. That's what I mean. Tax the rich, help the poor. That's what it is. If you're young and you're healthy and you're, you're taking rich. care of yourself. You're healthy and rich. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, if, if rich was a barometer measured by health, yeah. then that's exactly what they're doing. They're taxing the healthy to pay for the sick. Look, if I choose to take care of myself and I choose to eat right and I choose to exercise and I choose to, you know, stop smoking, which I've done so that I can live a longer life, then why the fuck do I have to subsidize people that don't choose that route? Yeah. Well, that is why I firmly believe after that dissertation that I should be allowed to not wear my seatbelt. That is, 100%. Thank you. you're 100%. probably 100 thinking about something su super profound. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the, glad to be in a room with other people that get my seatbelt argument. Yeah, yeah, I've made absolutely. that argument since I was like 15 or 16. Now listen, if the government like was paying for my health care, straight up, like if the government said we are paying for everybody's medical bills, but where right, did they? All the time. Where did they? But listen, if you do that, we need you to wear your fucking seatbelt. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm still not on board with that because I wouldn't want my but government. It makes more sense. It makes way more sense way than more sense. you have to pay for your own health care. By the way, you also have to wear. What a if I opt out of your health care? Can I then not wear my seatbelt? <laughs> yeah, no. Imagine and if the you government... have to wear a motorcycle helmet. Have to? It's in California. Listen. Now I know some some of the states out there you don't have to wear a helmet, but. You have to wear a helmet Listen, on a motorcycle. You have to. It's a absolutely. One. Yeah, a DOT. Which How many DOT, political seats did they buy? DOT, yeah. the, the <laughs> DOT safety rating is actually one of the worst in the, in the world, by is the way. Is it really? It, yeah, it's trash. It yeah, the DOT rating is trash. The, I think it's Snell is the like. That's right. Snell is like right. the one that it is, is, yeah. is to have. That. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, global one. What is Danny? Mix? Danny mix recently. Is a, a system. Oh, not, okay. not a oh, okay. rating. Danny recently toured the uh, Snell facility. That's sick. Yeah, he's, he toured the Snell factory or something, yeah. and he was like, "Anytime you want to go, man, we'll I'll bring you. I'll bring you over there." That's fucking sick. So he, he can take there. Factory in the world. Uh, yeah. But anyways, uh, Snell, it's Snell. garbage. You absolutely should wear a helmet because yeah. if you go down on a bike, you're cracking your coconut. I've but never. I should not. <laughs> Have to. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it, because look, you want to ride a motorcycle at 180 miles an hour down the interstate. Your helmet's not helping you. You know what I mean? Oh you, yeah, you know you you're get dead. plowed. You get plowed yeah. going through an intersection at 55. Your helmet's probably not helping you. Most of the time, if you're on the freeway on a motorcycle yeah. and you take a wreck, you're probably gonna die. But most of the time, if you're just on a motorcycle, you're probably gonna die. Let's but be if you, let's if, be honest. If, yeah. if, <laughs> if, I feel like one of the main like issues that humanity faces now is that we have because of the modernization of societies globally. We have really allowed dumb people to live way longer than they should. Like we dumb talk people, about this constantly. I love the jo the old Joe Rogan joke about like we're just like smart people are being outbred by dumb people, mm -hmm. and then he like looks at the crowd and he's like, "You're all laughing because you think you're part of the smart people, but like, how does the cell phone work? Like, where are the where are the problem? You know, right? Yeah. But like, it's totally true. Like, there's a lot of people that just should not have made it through like childhood. That mm. just get out into the, the world and then they have kids, and like we're just getting dumber. Yeah. If you <laughs> remove laws like, hey, if you're too stupid to wear a helmet, you don't you, uh, bummer. We're you, the laws of evolution should still be allowed to work. Oh, Jake right. and I, Jake and I, when we were riding the side by side, when we were checking out the property, um, I made a comment. I was like, "We're we're all just ants, dude." And Jake was like, "Yeah, we're we're, we're the." We're the biggest ants. And I was like, we're not even the fucking biggest ants. He's like, oh shit, you're right. He's like, 
we're the well, we are the smartest ants. I was like, I dolphins. don't know, man. <laughs> Have you met most of these ants? <laughs> also dolphins. <laughs> also dolphins. Yeah, they got sonar. <laughs> Dude, whales can like talk to each other from like the other side of the planet and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I know. If they just had opposable thumbs, then they would be dominating. Tiny, the tiny Earth. side yeah. tangent, and then I'm gonna get right back to Dudley. Um <laughs> Do it. So, so have, have you guys ever heard like little kids or women or even other people say like, oh, I wonder what those animals are saying to each other, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, I, I wonder what they say to each you other. You mean like me every night with my dog? Yeah. Like, like you what do you, talk, you, you, you I just don't tell anyone. Don't do, no, yeah. like, what, like what are they saying to each other in their language, right? Yeah. And I thought about that the other day as I was walking through the supermarket and I was like, not a single person here is talking to anybody else. They're probably not saying <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about all the dead animals in the supermarket? No, no, no. I'm talking about like when you walk through the supermarket. How many people do you say hello to? Oh, yeah. No. So like dogs walking by dogs, do you think they say hello? Yeah. (laughs) Or birds, right? (laughs) They're not saying shit to each other. You see see one bird in a tree that's just like, wow. You assume like that must be a really important message, but like when you're walking down the street and there's a homeless guy yelling at traffic, exactly, it's, it's, it's the, the same, same thing. thing. It's the same. Anyways. It's probably just a half retarded yeah. bird in a tree. <laughs> like, so um, one one line that I like that theory so much. Right. <laughs> so one line that hits hard as fucking balls, dude, is we are in an age of free men who have cho- who choose to have no masters. Mm-hmm. That yeah. hits hard. And you can see it globally. Oh, yeah. Globally. That's mm-hmm. where I wanted to go with the 3D printing. Is that stuff. what uh and that's what Dudley said that verbatim, right? Yeah, he, I, I think I messed up the end whether it's choose to have no masters or whatever, yeah. but basically verbatim, yeah. Yeah. Cuz all the 3D printing stuff, that really got its feet underneath of itself as like a movement in the UK. Yeah. And the UK really came after firearms. All of a sudden, isn't that where 3D Print repeat. I can't remember his. Uh, there's a social media influencer. Print shoot repeat. Print shoot repeat. Isn't he UK based or somewhere? I don't think over so. There? I think he's in the US. Is he US? Yeah. Uh, there's I saw there's him at in least Texas. a guy that's like bakalava style that shoots that's, all kinds of. That's 3D PSR. Stuff. He's in he's in the US. I got. Yeah. I'll find the guy I'm th- yeah. thinking of. But a lot of that 3D printing stuff, I feel like it grew out of I the think. UK environment where they were like, mm, "You're not going to take my guns away from me." Yeah. Which is gangster. That's yeah. exactly what it should be. Absolutely. And then we were able to make the argument through like American courts that 3D printed um, emailable like blueprints. It's not a firearm. You can't. Nope. You can't legislate that. Yeah. Which was a pretty solid win. I don't think it's going to hold water forever. But well, I mean, that dives into the like the freedom of information, right? Mm-hmm. It's just information mm-hmm. until it is a solid working thing. Yeah, but how many years ago did we take the anarchist cookbook off? library shelves exactly. and bookstores and right. we can't even you can't even go into you can't go into a books a million or any kind of bookstore like that and find Mein Kampf. why right what, shouldn't you read Mein Kampf? you know what i mean <clears throat> like isn't that something that we should all know well if we can't then i mean like why why why, why would, did um, why did putin get to invade russia and no american news outlet played his speech about why he did it uh, yeah you know. <laughs> putin <laughs> invading russia <laughs> I don't know. Super smart today. No, I think I think the 3D thing, how he's talking about 3D 3D printing guns. I think it's incredibly important. <sighs> whether you're, what are your, whether your feelings on it are are positive or negative, I think it's incredibly important to the entire Second Amendment foundation and the Second Amendment movement, which is the proof that you can take them, but you cannot take them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you can ban them. We will find yeah. humanity finds a way, and yeah. it's not just it's not just good people with good intentions that find a way, no. right? Like by and large, it's criminals that will maintain the ability to be violent to each other. So but, governments and criminals. But what's what's very interesting is right now, the overwhelming majority of people that are three D printing firearms are all good people. Yeah. So, like, if good people are doing this, bad people can one hundred percent do it. Look, yeah. So what makes you think that banning a fucking Colt AR-15 off the store shelves or whatever brand you want is yeah. going to change anything? It's not going to change exactly. anything. Exactly. No, they. But they. The thing is, is like we're all. I'm not saying you and I, but I'm saying a lot of us are arguing about whether, like, why they're doing it. Like, why would you ban AR-15s? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. They know it doesn't they make know. a difference. They know. Yeah. They they're know. not going to no, ban I, guns. I, I totally this disagree. Is, I totally what? No disagree. fucking way, I totally man. Disagree. They know that they're not going to get rid of it. When you, when they you can't have, get rid of it. When you have baked Biden, into the Constitution, there's millions of fucking, fucking guns totally in the United disagree. States. I don't think that they can get rid of it, no. But I don't think that their argument is from a place of wanting... What did you just say? Say it to me again. He says they know 
Yeah. They know. They know that it doesn't make a difference. They I know totally that disagree. it doesn't make a difference. I, I genuinely believe, like even Biden is, no, no matter how senile and lost he is, when he comes out and he gives his little speech about how you want to fight an F fifteen, you, you need something bigger than Nuclear an Air fifteen. He is fully aware how dangerous a motivated individual with a firearm is. I, I think that they are fully aware that an F-15 and tanks and everything that makes the American military the mightiest military in the yeah. world, they are fully fucking aware that a group of motivated individuals with AR-15s are a real fucking problem. We had 20 years I of evidence that, on that. I think 20 years of evidence it. during the Afghanistan right. war exactly. that all it took exactly. was a couple dudes in a, with AKs and right. sandals and, right. and ICOM, chatter, and ICOM radios. When they like make make light of it and they make fun of it, like about like oh the AR fifteen, like they they very very intentionally want to get rid of anything that allows you to shoot and move. I'll agree with you. On, I'll that. agree with you on yeah. that. Yeah. Like I, the that, joke about like oh you need something bigger than an AR fifteen to fight an F fifteen. They're trying to make it seem dumb so that it doesn't seem like it's actually that big of a deal. But if I can shoot the pilot, then what the fuck is the point of the F fifteen? You know what I mean? So, like, I just hit you before you're in the plane, and now it's. My I'm going to agree with you on that because and, I will agree with you on the Afghan fact that they, Iraq. they, they, when he says something like that, like, what are you going to, what are you going to do with your little AR-15? Yeah. I think he's fully aware of how impactful yeah. it really is. For you'd kind of have to be an idiot not to be aware of how impactful an armed, you know, person with the right ideology an and a fucking populace, gun, yeah. an armed populace, can be. But I genuinely think. That they know, they know that banning a gun or putting up regulation is not going to disarm the citizenship. No, I'm not gonna, saying I, I know it's that they disarm know it's, good people, and then there's just a they they know it's, it's, it's looking at society through the lens of sociology. They know that the mass majority of people are just going to do what keeps them out of hot water. Everyone climbs the easy ladder. The amount of people that are like, I don't care what rules you write. Right. I am a self-determined human being. How how many people actually make up? Like how? What's the percentage of population anywhere in the world of those types of people? It's a very small amount of people that are like, yeah. I, I I live my life by my rules, and I ask no other man for what's right and wrong. And to your it's point, if they were people. going to disarm the United States citizens, that will be done generationally. It's not going yes. to happen. And it's going to happen. And that's what, what they're doing. aiming It's going to, yeah, exactly of course. It's like, well, we just got to let one or two yeah. more generations go by, and I think we can yeah. get this on lock to Which, where most people can't have That's guns. the ugly door of school shootings. Why are you, why are there, why are, why are school shootings a thing? Right? If you go back to the 60s, everyone came to school with their hunting rifles in their trucks. And people were way worse with bullying. People, you could buy, you could buy beer when you were 17 in high school. Like, why weren't there school shootings then? You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. kids you, got beat more If often. you can convince an entire generation of kids that, like, you're going to die at the hands of someone coming in your classroom, right. then those kids grow up to be like, we got to get rid of these guns. Yeah. Generational attacks on the kids. It's the same. Yeah. If no, you want to run I, a successful I, business, you market at the kids. If you want to run you. a successful PSYOP, you market it at yeah. the kids. I just think that they – and and that goes to my point and to your point at the same time. And the, the, and the reason why huge. it's the reason why it goes to my point and your point at the same time is because they are fully aware that all of this gun regulation is going to do absolutely nothing yeah. right now, right now. However, it gives them if they keep the fucking narrative up and they continue to keep it going mm -hmm. through generations then they can absolutely brainwash generation yeah. after generation and get the strong men out of the fucking way to where they can get their way. Eventually it's, it's a long play. One they're, of my they're, favorite quotes. Once it's legal, then they can legally kill you because right. it's legal. Yeah. War is legal, right? One of my favorite quotes is, Rome wasn't built in a day, and Rome did not fall in a day. Right. It did not. It did it not fall in a day. absolutely did not fall in a day. It took, it took some time. It took years. Generations. It, took, generations. It, took, it took generations. Yep. Yeah. Starting with Commodus, starting yes. with Marcus Aurelius' son. That was the beginning of the fucking end for the entire Roman Empire. What I wanted to... What I wanted to segue into from what you guys, what we were just talking about as far as but why, right? The fundamental reason why do they want the guns gone? Well, we kind of all know that. But more importantly, who's doing it? It goes back to our last podcast. And if you guys that are listening haven't listened to it, go back to the last podcast. It was the last one that we did, right? Or it was the one before last where it was, we were talking about who truly owned the firearm one. companies. Yep. Okay, yep. so it was the last podcast where we get into like who Actually owns majority Smith and share majority in shares in Smith and Wesson. Majority shares shares of Olin Corporation, who have like sixty percent of the fucking market on uh, Winchester ammo. Okay, so they own the ammunition and they own the guns. 
Now, if they only emit, there's something that I recently found out and it plays right into what we were talking about with NAGR. NAGR recently had to rescind their, um, they had to rescind their lawsuit on the Colorado high capacity, standard capacity uh, magazine ban. Did you hear about this? No. This is interesting. This is really fucking interesting, you guys. So pay attention. That I'll tell you guys after this podcast. Okay. That, that I yeah. Okay. Anyways, so continue. I'm I'm going to talk about this in this podcast, and I've actually debated on whether or not I still want to go to Shot Show this year because of Ooh, this. Okay. Yes. Hit me. Like genuinely, and I hope Man, like if we can get enough of us together, I would like like we're running up. A road I would like to I like boycott. I would like to boycott that entire fucking yes. show. I just know start that, a new one. I know these fucking idiots won't get it. Do a new goals. one. Do a new one. Yeah, goals, like goals in, in, in Knoxville. Anyways, I'm is very, very curious. Real start to this. Tell me. All right. Because I, I might know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. But. So recently, so NAGR, as does, you know, any entity that is going to be supporting the Second Amendment, they. Actually push, supporting the Second Amendment. Actually minute. supporting the Second Amendment by physically going out there and taking legal steps. Which is zero firearms manufacturers. This is the intrinsic issue in the business is like, why do none of these companies have a legal lobbying part of the department? I will tell you why. And this is, this is terrifying. Well, then no it lobbying. goes right back into who fucking owns them. So yeah. I think we're starting to draw some connections that. I think PSA is starting to push. I, I, genu- I genuinely think that if, if we are. Dr- like we're drawing some connections and some parallels publicly and uh, I would never kill myself. Just so you know, <laughs> if I, if, if somebody finds me dead, I feel like we have to start at, at the hands of a suicide. That, yeah. <laughs> if I was I ever d- shot I have in no my head suicidal twice. tendencies, I'm <laughs> letting you know right now, I'm a perfectly happy, married, mostly heterosexual man. Okay. You haven't worked uh, for Boeing, <laughs> so you're probably safe. <laughs> what? You haven't worked for Boeing, so you're probably, you're yeah. probably safe. Okay. Um, I wonder why our podcast so, only gets a few thousand views. <laughs> NAG, NAGR, I know. Uh, NAGR a while back uh, filed a lawsuit for the ban of high capacity magazines in mm-hmm. Colorado. They did so with the intention of being able to take that all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Now, in order to take that all the way to the Supreme Court, they they can file an injunction mm-hmm. and, and a lawsuit for it. But in order for it to go to the Supreme Court, they have to provide hard evidence. Right. Right. There has to be a large substantial amount of evidence as per the Supreme Court if they're ever going to hear one of these cases. In order to do that, they need to be able to establish common use of high-capacity magazines. In order to establish common use, they have to have an entity that has the data that they are common use to be able to come and actually sit down and testify in a courtroom about high-capacity magazines Mm -hmm. and how prevalent they actually are. Now, it is NSSF is the entity to do that. Mm-hmm. NSSF is the National, National Shooting, Shooting Sports, Sports Foundation. Foundation. Or Foundation. Foundation. Or something or like that, right? I, I already like where this is coming. Okay. So NSSF also is the one who puts on SHOT Show, yep. which is the sporting hose over there uh, show. I, what does it actually stand for? Sporting it's something outdoor. Sporting hunting outdoor, outdoor trade, trade show. show. Yeah. They put on SHOT Show. It's ran by NSSF. Yep. Okay, so there's the there's the coordination, uh, the correlation. If you guys don't know, um, NAGR and their attorneys had explicit permission from the NSSF to have their representative go out and testify. They had it back in January. They got permission back in January that the NSSF representative would go out and testify and say, "Hey." Here's the NSSF data on common use for high capacity, standard capacity. Let's not call them high capacity, yeah. standard capacity magazines. They are common use. And here's the data that we have. NAGR can't just walk into court and say, this is the NSSF data. Right. They can, but if it goes to the Supreme Court, Supreme Court's going to say, well, who testified on behalf of the NSSF? It's, right. it's not going to hold any water. Right. So I didn't know right at the end, <laughs> right when that person was about to go testify, they rescinded. And all the NAGR wanted them to do was all the NAGR wanted an SSF representative to do was to do the exact same thing that they did in Illinois. When they went to Illinois during the mag, uh, standard capacity mag, magazine ban in Illinois and testified that they were common use in Illinois. Or I think they may have done it for the uh, uh, assault weapon ban or whatever. But they did that a while back in Illinois. And then all of the sudden, they didn't do that 
for the NAGR in Colorado. Weird. That's fucking crazy. So that led me to like start doing some research. Oh no, we're rabbit holing. <laughs> and I was like, why would the NSF do such a thing? And so I looked up, well, who runs the NSSF? Well, it's a guy named, uh, fucking what is the guy's name? I can't, um, Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo. It's like Joe Osberton or something like that. But there, there is a president of the NSSF. But more importantly, there are decision makers for the NSSF. The decision the decision makers for the NSSF are a board of governors. Yep. Guess who the board of governors are? Blackwater, Vanguard, or Black Blackrock, Vanguard, State Street. No, I don't know. You are literally just one layer off of who the board of governors are for the NSSF. Listen, here's why: the board of governors for the NSSF are Smith and Wesson, uh, Olin Corporation, which manufactures sixty percent of the country's ammo. Um, a ton of other companies like Beretta and all all, all those companies yep. that we went through. Beretta is a privately owned company. Not nothing against Beretta. Love you, Beretta. That, that's not the one. But there are other <laughs> we companies can leave in the there. Tech out today. The, too. the two that I can absolutely one hundred percent remember are Olin, the the country's number one manufacturer of ammunition, and uh, Smith and Wesson. Smitty. Smitty. Right. Both of which. Majed- the majority, majority shareholders and the majority investors Black are Rock Blackwater Vanguard. and Vanguard and Black State Rock. Street. BlackRock, not Blackwater. Blackwater is the uh, mercenary the, Yes, group. exactly. BlackRock and Vanguard. So here's the point that I'm trying to make is the decision makers for the NSSF are in fact the same motherfuckers who are pushing agendas yep. for gun regulation, the same guys who actually own majority st- shares in the defense agency. The same guys is that it, own majority shares in other companies that are directly pushing for gun regulation. But the, yeah. they Exactly. Yeah. So they own the majority shares of of firearm companies and ammunition companies. And at the same time, they're, 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 they're also on the board of decision-making for the entity, the NSSF, who is supposed to be supporting the second amendment. Now getting into digging into the NSSF a little bit more, the NSSF is actually, while they support the second amendment, allegedly, allegedly, they are not a second amendment company or they are not a second amendment foundation. They are a sport. They're a, a shooting a, sports. Yeah. A Foundation. shooting. A shooting sports. A hunting. Mm-hmm. They, they are. They I mean, represent. That's nothing of what the Second Amendment stands for. It has nothing to do with no. the Second oh, Amendment. Oh, I want to run on this. So Shoot, bad. Shooting on. sports. <laughs> shooting sports and outdoorsy stuff and the whole Biden's and and Jill Biden's explanation. Get a of, shotgun. I've got a shotgun. That's all you need. That that has nothing to. You don't need an AR-15 for hunting. That's not with. The NSSF is representing hunters and sports shooters. That has nothing to do with the fucking Second Amendment. Therefore, they have nothing to do with the fucking Second Amendment as far as I'm concerned. Other than the fact that they have a history of supposedly supporting verbally the Second Amendment and and holding events that support the Second Amendment like I thought SHOT Show was. Is it supporting the Second Amendment or is it garnering tens of thousands of dollars from – Second Amendment based company. The latter. Yeah. The latter. The latter. So keep your enemies close, right? So the reason why we cannot have standard capacity magazine issuance on a national scale as per the Supreme Court is solely because NSSF at the last minute before NAGR could find any other replacement to be able to testify from any other institution that has the data, they pulled out right at the last minute knowing the NAGR would have to rescind that lawsuit. They didn't have to, but they did be on. They did so because if they didn't, it wouldn't have made it to the Supreme Court. They would have completely ruined the fucking case. And good for them for taking the harder route and saying, "Look, we're just going to have to do this all over again." Yeah. Good for yeah, them for doing that. It's the right answer. It's so, the right, it's the the right, right thing to do. So I'm really happy they did that. But it, it, I'm starting to think like, what the fuck is this? in SSF that I have paid so little attention to over the years, why would they do such a thing? And I, and how many of us are actually going to get together and not go to shot show? Just us. Go. Fuck that. Yeah. I think it's, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just going to keep making this point over and over again. You had top the top floor. You, will be there. Yeah, you had the two different floors. You had the basement crew and you had like the top floor, all the DOD contractors, major everybody. Yeah. The crowd was in the basement, man. If all of the smaller companies that get the basement, the basement booths, yeah. if all of those companies just took, just went somewhere else, the fucking crowd would too. Right. No one gives a fuck to see what the new Glock is. It's the same shit. No one so was in the Glock hasn't changed booth. since Gen like, 3. Yeah. So, what, like, so what do we so what do we do? So 
everybody is already paid. So what's the more impactful thing to do? Not go in 2026 and not pay for 2026 so that nobody pays NSSF for this SHOT Show ever again and somebody, hopefully in AGR or somebody with a little bit of teeth in what they're doing actually stands up for the Second Amendment, who, who actually stands up for the Second Amendment represents a show like that? Or do we all go anyway with two middle fingers up to the NSSF yeah. That, that and raise a fucking just 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 raise hell while we're there. Let's have flyers. Yeah, yeah. And let's print out flyers yeah. and just be like, hey, you Dude, know what? The, you down. know what the guys no, are doing that are running a great this right idea. now. Let's yeah. have flyers. Let's hand it out to everybody. Do you know what the NSF NSSF did? Take take boom, the boom, take the attitude boom. that Dirty Kid had with the uh, ATF sucks van they rented. ATF at, is gay. Yeah. yeah, or ATF is gay truck they rented for last shot show that just drove around the perimeter of it. Yeah, <laughs> take that vibe and just go hardcore. Did you know how many smaller end companies you could get on board with this? Like companies out of the out of the basement, you know how many people you could get on board with? Like, oh, let's do that. Let's yeah, do we that. should. Let's boys, go. Are you willing to not go to Shot Show next year? Are you willing to not go to Shot Show next year? Let's get you fucking kicked out of Shot Show, dude. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah! Hell Even if it's yeah. like go pay the fee. But I don't rather work, booth. dude. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> like go pay the fee, whatever. Have your booth, and then just make a fucking scene the whole time you're there. Yeah. It just if just get a hundred companies all together on the same those wonderful stickers that you guys have. I have to bleep that out. Sorry. I, just, I gotta oh, cut that yeah, out. Oh yeah, you gotta cut that out. Fucker. Uh, but since we're that's, already, a, that's anonymous. Since we're already cut out. But that vibe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know you. So since we already cut out, and we're that's back. And we're back. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I think we should going back to NSSF. It would be nice to be able to boycott Shot Show 100. percent Just but it would. What it would do is it would show that you can't do shit like that. And for not feel who repercussions. And not feel repercussions. I don't think now, you should boycott it, though. You know who? I think you should stand in their front yard at Shot we will. Show. And no, no, call we them will go. At Shot we show. will stand no, in their go. front yard yeah. and we will call them yeah. out. But what would be nice is if there was no, they would have a certain amount of time. Let's give it six months to publicly acknowledge what they did, give an explanation why they did it. And if it doesn't suffice or they don't do it, yeah. then nobody goes to 2026. They don't have one. Of course, they're. There will be some people going to 2026. Give me Shot a show. good reason. Who's going to go to 2026? I, I, I'm like trying to play devil's advocate. I can't see any good reason why you would not send your representative to represent the data that you give, gave to NAGR to help support their lawsuit case. I cannot find no. even a devil's advocate reason there isn't why one. you would do that unless you are inherently on the side of the enemy and not wanting to support the Second right. Amendment. Exactly. And there is no, especially within within a within only a year that your representative went out and did the exact same thing for a case in Illinois. Which it's must have exactly, slipped by. Yeah, it's it's very clearly like people happened within the once, organization believed the right again. thing and someone mm. from outside the organization came in and was like, hey, you know what Steve did the other month? <laughs> yeah, don't Never do that again. again. Never right. again. Can right. I, can I can yep. say yeah. something? I'm dying. This is what originally attracted me to you guys and Tactical Armament as a company and like a brand. It was my naked video, wasn't brand. it? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, my, I have, I have this really significant intrinsic issue with the firearms community. The you can look at company even before we knew who uh, like owns everything. Firearms community or the firearms the, industry. The, the firearms industry, the two A community, kind of a little bit of all of it. Because you have this argument that we have treaded for a really long time, where you have the NRA goes up to Washington D.C. and they give a speech and they talk about how AR-15s are for sporting rifles. They're sporting <laughs> rifles. Smith and Wesson doesn't make a AR-15. They make the MMP, MMP sport. Sport. Right. When you try to make your argument that this isn't a weapon of war, but it's for sporting, then you have annihilated the 2A right, right out of the gate. Can I plug in real fast? Yeah. Every single weapon on the face of the planet is a weapon of war. Right. Nothing is sport. You sport to practice the real thing. The, the My intrinsic issue with a lot of the 2A support groups like the NRA, a lot of the manufacturers within the industry, a lot of social media influencers, like there is a lot of people that have decided that we can't draw a hard line on what these are, why we own them, why is it that these multi-billion dollar companies never lobby to keep themselves legal? You know what I mean? There's no good answer why Smith & Wesson, Daniel Defense, Colt, 
Winchester, Remington. Why do none of these? Why don't? Why don't all of these companies come together and lobby to keep themselves legal? There you is listed ins- like three that are owned by Vista. But, but no, I know. I, and, and like the more that we kind of do this series of like who owns what, it really answers a lot of these questions. Yeah. But like this was my intrinsic bone to pick with the community was like. We should stop saying that they're for sport. We should stop doing things like USPSA and saying like, well, my high capacity magazine is for competition. No, the fuck it's not. No, it's not. My AR-15 is 100% a weapon of war. 5.56 kind of sucks at hunting. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It is designed to gunfight with. Yeah. That's what it's for. It's not even that good at putting human beings down. 5.56 five, means I can carry a lot of it, which means I can shoot a lot of it, which means I can move on you. That's the point. Yeah, it's true. We have to make the argument from our from our industry, from the companies, from the manufacturers, we have to prove that as a manufacturer, we believe in the Second Amendment. And it blows, it, I, I, there is no answer to explain to me why no major manufacturer will draw a hard line. Great. Why doesn't Daniel Defense have on the outside of the box, not for sport? Yeah. Give me a solid explanation why they would the one thing that we can that agree argument. with the people on the other side of the aisle who are tra- who are attempting right. to regulate totally them where, where they're like this is not necessary for hunting. This totally is a weapon agree. of war. Totally agree. And I look I at that and I'm like and I, I look back. I look at them and I go mail order. Yes. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. You're with you. right. It totally is a agree weapon with you. of war. Five, five, six. Su- like but, when people are like, "Oh, I got this AR-15 for home defense." That really the best you know, option? You know what you else know what, is a weapon of war? A bolt action. You know what else is a weapon a of hammer. war? <laughs> it's a, a fucking, fucking muzzle load. Hammer. Yeah. A, yeah. a hammer. Yeah. More the, people are killed by hammers every M14. year than, than handguns. Look, more people just, are killed by cows and sharks. <laughs> I actually heard somebody argue <laughs> not too long ago. I forget who it was, and it was somebody that. <clears throat> it's going to really narrow it down, but there's somebody who we either really like or don't like at all on social media. Wow. But I remember thinking, <laughs> but it was, they went through and they said, they keep calling this a weapon of war. A weapon of war is this. It's the M4. And I hate to do it again. I hate to fucking do it, but it, I think it was Bakken. I, I don't know though, for sure. I really don't know. He it, did make the m and sport argument. And I agree with him on that. No, no, mm-hmm. it was th- whoever did this video pulled out an M4 and said, this is the weapon of war. This is an AR-15. There are fundamental differences between no, this no, and not. this. No, it was labeled Colt AR-15. Do you, do you, do you yeah, remember who? Argument. Do you remember who it was I kind of that did that? Uh, I'm going to try to find it, and we'll hopefully be if, able to put if, it up for you if here. If we can find it, we will. Uh, it it is a video, video, and somebody did a video, and it was uh, somebody that was you know well respected within the like you know at least well respected with the amount of their mm-hmm. subscribe subscriber count, where they did a full video on like. This is an M4. This is an AR-15. These two things are not the same. No, they're not. And the reason why is because there's a selector lever that brings you over to a three-round burst I mean, on an M4. I mean, technically, that is correct, right? I mean, technically. I mean, technically. Right? Well, I mean, But like, the reality of it is, did you run three-round burst? Uh, I had them when I first came in. We Everybody hated them. But, but, did you, yeah, but did you, but did you, but did you, did I ever use it? No. Did you run no. a three-round and, burst? And, and I would make, That's what I, I'm saying. When I, you were, when you were in combat this or is any argument. training environment, yep. were you ever using a three-round burst? This is burst? an argument I make consistently when I'm trying to make my weapons of war. Right? Yeah. When I'm trying to make. four. Yes. When I'm trying to make my weapons of war argument, this is, this is one of the topics. This is one of my like pieces of evidence. Unless everything has gone south and I am the only guy in this room and I've got to kill 30 dudes that are all an issue. I can't justify using full auto for anything. A belt-fed crew serve owns the battle space, and it's not necessarily shooting at people. I'm trying to dominate space with it. It is suppression. A gunfight is individual, well-placed rounds for specific reasons. I'm either pinning to move, or I'm pinning. I'm I'm ending my fight. But if I go full auto with my weapon, if I, dude, if I, I can't even, I can't even imagine. If if we took like some harassing fire like on patrol and one of my dudes in front of me just went full auto and emptied a magazine, I would skull fuck that dude. Yeah. I would skull fuck that dude. The fact that he didn't manage his ammunition, that he drowned out everybody else being able to talk, and he just pissed twenty five rounds into the sky. Full auto is only for a very specific set of things, and it it doesn't make it makes the gun less helpful. So. Same with short barreled rifles. So this short barreled five five six is a less lethal firearm. Right. I know that. We talk about this all the time. Banning that is just it's just. Oh, so man. so this is one of the Hollywoodisms, right? Where Hollywood has come through very much like suppressors and made it seem like suppressors are weapons of assassins Which, and hey, it some, completely silences a gun. Some suppressor companies are. Hey, they're, they're getting there. I'm proud <laughs> of you. <laughs> Did you know? make them quieter? Um, Did you know that suppressors sound like lasers? Yep. Did you know that they will burn the Jesus out of your balls when you transition? <laughs> Did you know that suppressors, you can shoot one person right next to another person and inside of a building and they'll have and they'll no explode. idea? But anyways, this is a Hollywood thing, right? Where 
you have Hollywood where it shows like in these war movies or even just like in action films where dudes just go full auto. Watch any fucking combat footage almost ever yeah. of like US troops. They get into a firefight. It's pop, pop, yep. pop, 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 pop. If full pop. auto is just a gigantic waste of ammunition. It's, it's just sick. a gigantic waste. Of, but yeah, unless, you, unless you have a crew serve weapon. If you have a crew serve. But then, if you but got a crew serve crew weapon, serve. That, that crew serve is meant to fucking lay down suppressive fire so that yeah. your your troops can engage in bounding movements and get up towards yeah. the point of contact. That, and, but that only works a, when you, that only works in a team. Like, yeah, like, it works in a team. If, if it was absolutely. just me out in the woods, I would never have a belt fed because it's just not going to. No. If the second that you open up with a belt fed, the. The belt, crew serves crew serves accomplish two important things. They His dominate coming out. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's killing me. Crew serves accomplish two important things. They dominate the battle space and they allow you to maintain your freedom of maneuver, which is super important. The other thing that crew serves do is they draw enemy fire to them. Mm. If you if you have gone out and bought yourself a NFA registered M60 and your plan is like into the world, I'm gonna put this thing in the window. You're dead immediately. Yeah. If you don't have anybody defending your machine gun, the machine gun's fucking useless. Yeah. Like, they only. It's just primary targets are always the machine guns weapons. are fun. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, it's it, it, yeah. You are the ultimate target. Yes, yeah, you were yeah, the ultimate that, target. The you second, were the, the ultimate target. This thing, thing is all coming at you. Shoot at that. Yeah, yeah. it's all coming. Wherever at Wherever you. you see fire superiority coming from on the battlefield, that is the thing you take out first. Right. Naturally. And it's just a thing that draws your attention. Yeah. You know, it, course, if you're yeah. when you're when you're adrenaline soaked, you're just gonna you're working off of pinpoint. You know what I mean? That that crew serves just gonna get your attention. That's right. Yeah. So man, I could go on that for a long time. I'm gonna just <laughs> let it go. But deep breaths. Oops, <laughs> Papa. Yeah. They are weapons, the, but it goes back down to the original point. These are weapons of war. You're absolutely right. right. They should be. They are. And standard capacity magazines are common use, and they yes. are meant because they we we are we are allowed to have them. We are allowed to have them. We we should technically be allowed to have, in my opinion, all of all of the things. I should I should be allowed to go purchase a fucking AT4 if I want a fucking AT4. That is from an argument of you should be allowed to make your own personal decisions and regulate your own life. And if the government or your neighbor believes that a seatbelt law is a good, important thing, then the intrinsic base <laughs> belief there is that you're incapable of managing your own life. And right. if you're incapable of managing your own life, I don't want you to have something that might hurt me because you can't manage your own shit. Yeah. That's why seatbelt laws And just like just, Dudley said, he said the ex just like he said, he it's not verbatim by any means, but he said, governments don't want you to have that stuff. <laughs> governments don't. And it was comical. They don't have your in best room. interest in yeah, it. They, yeah, they don't have your best interest in heart. And everyone in that room was like, <laughs> oh, come on. We care about the people. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's why we flew here on our G9 jets and got foot massages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same jets we fly to the Paris Climate Accord when we're trying to yeah. solve global warming, but we've yeah. just... <laughs> the underbelly is full of underage women in cages. Like, just dog we, shit humans doing dog shit things. Like I know, that. I know. Yeah. yeah, We all fly to these fucking meetings to talk about climate control when the jets that we took are responsible and greenhouse gases and, and cows farting when a cow's oh fart... Hole, you know what I mean? Oh my God. Like, there's no Can, nowhere near... The amount of emissions that you just exhausted all going to your fucking climate accord. So, you know? so there's something I want to bring up uh, real fast. Um, on our last episode when we were talking about who owns what and, and all these private equity firms and things like that, we brought up Palmetto. Yes. There was a really good comment with somebody who had done a little bit more digging. Um, okay. And JJE is actually the names of the three owners. Of Palmetto. Of Palmetto State. Got it. So, um, awesome and he sauce. was and he was saying some cool stuff about him. So I just wanted to clarify that for the air. So that Palmetto also, reigns supreme still. It seems like Looking it. Looking good. Uh, Looking good, Palmetto. And so, I wanted to also clarify that when we were saying that, th when we read the ChatGBT message, it was just ChatGBT's understanding that private equity takes money and large sums come from individual or uh, companies like. Blackwater, or okay. God damn it, we're stuck. <laughs> Black, Blackrock Vanguard. Got so, it. but it is just the three owners' names. I feel like we were Got fairly it. Yeah. 
clear about it. We were. We were I like, just want to be like. It's a maybe. It's but extra I clear. I will admit it. Like broke my heart a little because yeah. I I love Palmetto. Yeah. Like their their entire like business model. It their business model is very similar to Tacticon Armas business model. There's absolutely no reason for us to just rape you on price for no reason at all. This is what it costs to make this product. This is a margin that allows us to be successful as a company. Everything else is just us being greedy bastards. Yeah. And regardless of what, and I, I should make it very clear too that regardless about what we talked about before, just trying to get to the bottom of certain things. Palmetto State Armory, 100%, without any question at all, remains my like the number, number one, one firearm yeah. manu manufacturer in the United States, like in in the world. Like yeah. to me, also they, to my heart, they yeah, I mean, they, really they, they represent ammo they represent the fucking also. they represent the people, and the until they don't, I'll I'll stand behind them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can we? Uh, I, I feel like we're like winding down on this. Can can we just address like something that continues to annoy the Jesus out of me? What? And it's foreign entities, foreign lobbyist groups, foreign governments utilizing U.S. courts. I it just blows my absolute mind that like within the U.S. court system, that Mexico that, can sue the United right. States for providing United providing, States, providing right. weapons of war and to it, the cartel. And it's not even that. It's like mm -hmm. private individuals utilize yeah. U.S. court systems to sue major companies and stuff like how is that? I don't understand how it's possible. You're not a part of our system. You haven't signed on the line to be a part of the game. Why do you get to use our rules? Like you're not playing by those rules where you're from. Yeah. Why do you get to use my, my, you don't get to use my rules against me when you're not a part of the game. Well, what do you think is going to happen when they, if, if the ATT gets ratified? Like if it's not a rag out of check, I, I see if the ATT I don't think it, I don't think it actually yet. matters that much because the, 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 the that's the, the the whole joke behind like aim for the blue helmets, right? Like everyone is very aware <laughs> yeah. that like the the U.S. government and the powers that be that want to disarm the U.S. The, the the global elites look at the U.S. civilian populace as the biggest threat because the, <laughs> the, the largest threat. Yes, because the global the global humanity looks at the U.S. as the savior for them. So the global elites that manage all of these people that pursue free. Look at what the American flag means around the world right it's really lost its meaning here in the united states but when you go you know anywhere else in the world when um britain when they when they had their anti-covid lockdowns mm -hmm. or their anti-covid protests during all the crazy ass lockdowns but side note did you know that in the uk during covid they could come to your house if you yes. didn't go get your vaccine yep. and arrest you with a fucking swat team Got a license. you're not allowed to own yeah. a gun but yeah. we'll come to your house with flashbangs and machine guns yeah over a sh so anyways Around the world during COVID lockdowns, the sign of protest was the American flag. That's why the global elites want to kill the American idea. That's why the global elites want to have policy like this. But it's another its another one of these soft men climb soft ladders. They think that riding the ATT is somehow going to keep me from digging a hole and arming myself one day. You know, yeah. if the UN ever comes here and is like, hey, we're here to enforce the rules that you people won't enforce on yourselves. Yeah. Fucking find me. bro. Yeah. yeah. It's a war yeah. of attrition. Which is all it is. hundred percent. Yeah. And hard men make their own fucking ladders, so start making ladders. Yeah. So the uh, ATT is it was, yeah. Obama signed the treaty yep. back in like 20, really 20, 2013, 2014, but it hasn't been. If that it, it hasn't been ratified yet. You you know who else hasn't what did ratified? Because Biden, Biden did something that so gave we're not, the we're UN legal ability to to if if martial law was declared in the United States the UN could be the policing element that would come in. That I don't know. And it know. was like a treaty that was, it was like one of the first agenda things of the Biden administration. I don't I know. have a great video that you should probably watch. It's called mm. Red Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, know, you, know, you know who else hasn't ratified the ATT? Uh, Russia. Hell yeah, dog. Mm -hmm. United States and Russia remain the only global superpowers that have not ratified the I've, ATC. I've never been to Russia, and this is completely like out off the top of my head. Is like, it weird that I'm starting to like Russia but more I and care, more? I, care, I bet, dude. That, I, I bet you that the average... What says that it's bad over there? Like, I, honest talk. Like, I bet the average fucking red-blooded American male, like true red-blooded American male, not like a fucking pussyfoot son of a bitch, but like... I guarantee you we have more in common with the average Russian male. Yes. yes. Dude, I dude. know I every Russian male that I have ever met. I'm like, like I get a along Russian with this. Guy. I'm talking about like like actual Russian Hard. immigrant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like not he, first generation no. American. I mean like still Russian. Yeah. yeah. Right? Those dudes, They're hard like when names. I talk to them, I'm always like, I like this guy. When I talk to them, and I, I talk like to them about the kid. Second Amendment, I talk to them about the like my political views. If you're they align with shirt. mine. Yeah. They and, literally and, align with mine. The, 
It might have started bad, right? You had Stalin, like it, the communist system that built, well, I guess not built Russia, but like ran it over really yeah. bad. But like our perception of China, our perception of Russia, our perception of our uh, perceived enemies are through a media yeah. and educational system that's yeah. like heavily controlled. You know yeah. what I mean? If you took the if you if you took the guys that are out like in the woods in Russia drinking vodka and like wrestling with brown bears, which is like a real thing that you can find all over YouTube. Yeah. yeah. If you took one of those guys and like just a good salt of the earth construction welder, they get along. They're, it's the same human. It's the same, it's guy. The same yeah. human. You know, and like yeah. the same the same personality type in the United States that's just like leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. They exist in Russia. I'm sure they exist in China. Yeah. And, and that's that was his point with social media, which is something I wrote down that I wanted to talk about. Social media allows us the ability to have a platform that's very similar to the founding fathers and their pamphlets that were handed out, like the common sense mm -hmm. pamphlets. Social media allows us to push a similar thing, but in a way bigger the United States, the original founding of the United States was able to take 13 colonies and overthrow their overlords. Social media allows us to overthrow the overlords globally. And that's, I mean, that's, that's their fucking fear. That's Careful, the censorship. Bud. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah. Because you're telling me, you're telling me there's not red blooded Americans in China. There's not red blooded Americans in, I mean, look at fucking, um, was it Argentina that just hired or hired, <laughs> elected, um, was it Milo? The guy that was, he ran, oh, his campaign yeah. was like carrying a chainsaw yeah. around. Like that That's belief wild. system exists all over the world. It's just the United States is the last vestige of true free men that could make a stand. And everyone is aware of it. Look at how many articles have been written from the UK and Australia and all these places that have speech laws now. The average person in these places are, are waking up and realizing like, oh, they took our guns and now I can't, I can't disagree at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like. People getting sentenced to twenty years in UK over social media posts. Yeah, did you see that the guy? Yeah, the guy got the guy got. I guess it wasn't twenty. It was twenty, 20 months, months with a third of it reduced. But he that's was, almost two years. He was typing on Facebook with a broken leg at home. He's the most non-threat ever, and they didn't arrest any of the people that were involved in the riot. Did you see? They gave him twenty months for encouraging the riot. Did you see a police chief? saying that he would extradite U.S. citizens oh, for speech yeah. laws? They, they have flat out come and said that... that, that um, They'll come for U.S. citizens That Elon for Musk needs laws. to tread very lightly on X because X, the, the influence that X has in other countries, they're not going to let that fly in the U.K. This they is, will come and get Elon Musk. This is an open threat That's to the U.K. Right, police. Yeah, yeah. It's I the same thing. Yeah, yeah. The Canadian government did it with Sean Ryan when he had one of the um, Canadian Special Forces guys as the longest recorded sniper shot, which was like mm -hmm. over four miles of just Looney Tunes, but... But that guy talked about how he was thrown out of the Canadian special operations because he refused to get the COVID shot. And Canada sent a cease and desist to Sean Ryan, an American citizen. Like, <laughs> just shove it up your ass. <laughs> it means absolutely nothing to me. Yeah. You know? Get like, fucked. come get and come fucking find me. Ooh. I'm, feel, I'm feeling motivated. <laughs> <laughs> We're feeling good. We're feeling spicy. Come yeah. fucking find me, man. Yeah. So, um, that's all I had. That, I mean, that's that's really all I had too. I just I wanted to uh, I wanted to double down on the fact that those who we think represent us, like when you go to Shot Show and you see the NSSF, and then they behave like that, they have to be held accountable. First of all, we have to understand who's behind those things, who's on the board of government. Yep. Like it goes right in, bleeds right from our last podcast. Well, if the governing board is all of these companies who have shareholder shareholders like BlackRock and Vanguard that Thank represent God. those fucking companies, that that is fucking crazy. Terrifying. That is terrifying and it's crazy. And, and we're allowing it. And, it's, and we're allowing it's us. it. We allowed this. Now I don't know if there was some I mean, who knows? Like did that actually happen? Did speculation. Did did, did Fink somehow walk up to somebody in the NSSF or show up to, or walk up to the, the guy on the Smith and Wesson and say, listen, I'm your shareholder and, and you need to make this decision on this board for this decision, not to send that guy to go represent this magazine band, because all that's going to do is arm the people. And we have other intentions yeah, they or, just, or am I, di am I digging too far into it? Or is it just, they know that that doesn't represent the best interest of their stakeholders. So they decided to make that decision on their own or are they just being, like fucking idiots, and they had no idea what the either way what the decision was. So here's the thing. Here's my opinion of it. Either that happened because you follow the trail, right? Like you said, NSSF, then to the the board members, yep. then to who owns the stake in these companies, right. right? Then you can. It's fair to say, more than likely, right? It's fair to say, it's still speculation, but 
I would say it is worse to say that it was gross negligence and stupidity. Yeah. I would say that's worse. Yeah. Yeah. I never, would not want to claim that one. No, ne no. Never assign ill will to things that can be explained by negligence and stupidity, right? Like right. If you can explain it through stupidity, then don't assign it. Ill yeah, because for all we know, they were crazy. like, hey, man, you're supposed right. to go out to that uh, court thing. And he's just uh, high this as week. fuck but on his no couch. Way. And he's, he's like, like no, no, way. no, man, I'm not going, dude. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, <laughs> I, I don't think that it's Larry Fink or someone connected to him. I don't think that there's ever like a shot caller from on high that comes down and makes things like that happen. <laughs> right. I think that if you're looking at the U.S. and you're trying to figure out like who the secret police is, it's fucking HR departments. Mm. <laughs> who came along and decided that we can't – at what point did adults stop being able to say, I don't like what you just said, Steve? Yeah, like, Why do I have to have an who, adult who moderator? You, who for are shit? you to tell me that I can't sexually yeah, harass gonna, my employees? I'm gonna yeah. run. It. Well, no, my point is like, <laughs> say, say that you do, right? Say that you run an environment where like you sexually assault everyone that works for you. How long do you have people that work for you? Do you just run your company into the ground because you're a fuckface? Well, so so that's, why do you have to have an HR department? <laughs> that's, that, that's the fucking adult problem. Adult tattletales are ruining you, the it's world. Because you have to fucking but protect that's... the people that work. They have nowhere else to go. There's no other way they can leave and Stand go find up another yourself. job. Build but, uh, your own fucking ladder. But this is the fucking problem because. Because you have Vaginas? people. Yes. Yeah. They can take a beating and they keep the world going round. Buddy. <laughs> um, no, it's because you have people who are willing to give up their neighbors mm -hmm. and who are willing to put their heads down. When you have an employee, right? This happens at bars and restaurants all the time. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you guys, a Typical lot of bar owners are real fucking assholes. <laughs> um, but like you have this employer who's just a piece of shit, treats his employees like garbage but people need their fucking job yeah. and so when somebody comes in and they're a big dick swinger and this owner comes in and treats them poorly and this guy goes you're not going to treat me like that i'm going to fucking quit everybody else just goes yeah yeah, yeah they put their yeah, fucking exactly. head down and that's yeah. why yeah. yeah because you don't have people who are willing to go hey whoa yeah that was wrong we, we convinced our society that passive aggression is the most polite, it's polite. way to go about it. And it's not. No. It's not. If you have found yourself in conflict, solve Deal with the, the conflict. fucking conflict. Yeah, the life is conflict. It. That's yeah. what it is. It's a process of friction yeah. that you've got to find your way through. And it's not and, even a fucking fist fight yeah. anymore. It's and we've, saying, hey, we've, we've stop. intrinsically convinced our population that it's not your job to solve the friction, that your life should exist without anxiety. So yeah. here's your anxiety meds. You should never have conflict in the workplace. So here's an adult tattletale you can go to with your HR department. Your life should just exist like yeah. an electric glide. And, there's and beyond no the friction. HR department, it's like you can it's just go to a fucking attorney, an employment law firm, and and go sue the shit right. out of some institution because that institution did something wrong. I, I just don't understand. Why, why don't you just fucking move jobs? How do strip just clubs leave. exist? Just fucking leave. Everything about a strip the club only violates thing, HR department. The, the only thing that I can possibly think of where you would need the legal protection in a sense where I can't leave is that you've invested so much time and effort into a company or an institution or an organization that you have a pension built up and you have, you're in, you're vested. You, you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. Like you're vested. Yeah. You've dedicated a lot of your life and like, okay, man, I don't know. I can't like leave. Now I'm going to sue the shit out of you. Yeah. Right. I'm going to sue you for whatever. I can understand that. I get it. You're vested. But if you are, it, there's no like, uh, you, if, if you leave, you, you invest in your 401k here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you put money in your 401k. Yep. If you left your 401k goes with you, you could take that with you. You can cash yep. it out and roll that over into another company's 401k. Yep. Like, why do I need HR? Why do I need to be getting sued? Cause why do I have police. to, I have to carry fucking EPLI, which is this, like it's, it's, it's a protection from being sued for my employees. Yep. Right. I, I, and I have HR. So I got to have I have to have HR and it's fucking EPLI because if I get fucking sued, then they can come after me. Why do I need all that? Why don't you just fucking quit or, or even better, even better, Heaven forbid. come into my office and say, Hey man, I don't like you grabbing my dick every day. Would you please stop that? And I'd be like, yeah, dude, it'll stop grabbing your dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't I like, I hope everybody knows I'm joking. I don't, I kind of, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, if you got a problem, like, Hey dude, I didn't like the way you talked to talk to me. Hey man, I don't like being left out of these events. Yeah. Hey man, I, you know, you gave this dude a raise and you didn't give me a raise. Is there a reason why, you know, just have a conversation and don't be a dumbass. And if everybody just did that, nobody would need HR. It's called personal accountability. You mm -hmm. just fucking go up and just take responsibility for it. And if you don't like it, then just fucking leave and go somewhere else. I've, yeah. I've left two careers that were exactly what you're talking about. 
where the very department, the very people that I should have been able to go to and say, hey, everything that you told me I was supposed to be is now the thing that you're telling me makes me a danger to the organization that makes me an issue. I have just lived up to the requirements and the expectations that you gave me. Yeah. And now you've changed the script. When I sat down and talked to HR people about that, they showed me the fucking door times two. Yeah. So yeah. that that is where my belief of like the HR does not exist. To, why is it okay that that there's chiefs in the fire department I worked for that that actively cussed me out and said they wanted to physically harm me? I had a dude say he wanted to shoot me in the fucking throat, and HR didn't consider that an issue. Yeah. How is that not an issue then? What is HR doing? They're just secret police. Look, and I'm also not trying to be. I want to make that. Uh, what I'm not. <laughs> HR is the secret police. Uh, I'm also not trying to say I'm not trying to be so disconnected from the employee that it's like, just leave and go get another job. I understand that it's not that easy, but it's still doable. Like right. you can still work for an employer that you're not happy with and then simultaneously and actively go pursue other employment until you get other employment. There, there is a lot of nuance to replace your job. Do you. That's what I'm saying. Like you don't, why am not the only employer for people in the United States. So if somebody didn't want to work for me, they could actively go out, pursue other employment. Once they get other employment, put in their fucking two weeks or not, and then leave and go to that other place of employment. I'm not saying like, Hey, just quit, man. Everybody's got a nest egg, right? I'm not, I'm not discount. I'm not naive, but there's ways out. The problem is inherently people don't like that route. Why? Because it's a lot of work and it's uncomfortable. People don't and like people conflict. don't want to, they don't want to be uncomfortable. People don't like Nobody conflict. wants to be uncomfortable. Nobody wants to go out and interview for other jobs. It takes work. Oh my God. I got to fucking maybe take a, a dollar an hour pay cut, which I is going to cost. I take rejection. Yeah. yeah. It, I may it, have to take rejection. I've got to put my resume back together. They accept me here. If yeah. I already accept it. Let's say I'm the HR rep for Tacticon, right? Oh God. Which would be a. Uh, maybe that would be awesome. But violation in and of itself. Yes. Yes. Let's say I'm the HR rep. Dude, it's a violation because like they just live in a world that's not based in reality. And my entire <laughs> opinion is just based in reality, whether it's comfortable or not. But let's say I'm the HR rep and you touch Nolan's butt all the time, right? The only thing that I do is I come do you in think to I got like this position? broker <laughs> the situation. Is no, I give Nolan a conflict-free way to say I don't like that, which is good. Right. Yeah. Like you, sh it, there should be an environment inside of your workplace where like he doesn't have to necessarily stand up for himself. All people are not the same. So like ha there being someone that you can run to to say like, hey, I'm being sexually assaulted by Harvey Weinstein every day. You know, that's a good thing. Yeah. But HR doesn't accomplish that, that individual inside that social interaction doesn't accomplish anything more than saying you can't do that to him, which you could have just said in the very fucking moment. You know yeah. what I mean? Harvey or, Weinstein only existed because people allowed themselves. That, How many I movies can't. did they make after that happened? I know. Mm. Yeah. So you found mm. yourself in his hotel room, and then he fucking exposed himself, yeah. and the door was right was, behind you, who was the and you didn't grab that, the door handle and walk out of the room? You there was the comedian. dick willingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was there was like, the comedian that got in trouble. You're going to be Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comedian that got in trouble for jerking off in front of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was like. Not like once, so like it was like a known thing. Yeah, like Pee Wee Herman. No, 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 no. Was, he's uh, funny as shit too. It was very disappointing. That sucks. But I mean, it's not that disappointing. My argument, my argument was like, we're all in this meeting, and you just start jerking it. <laughs> yeah. Why am I still in the meeting? No, no, no. no. So like, there's more context to that, which is which makes it even better for him. He told people like, hey, yeah, I like no, no, to do no. This shit. no, no. <laughs> it, it was it was this it was this instance. He had this girl that came with him to his hotel room, and apparently, like he. It wasn't like really going anywhere. And he was just like, he looked apparent according to the story. <laughs> he goes, I heard the story. I'm going to fucking jerk off. You can stay in here Which if you want. Douchebaggy, but not <laughs> illegal. Yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. like, you can she, stay. She, like, and she him. stayed in there <laughs> and, then sued and him. watched him jerk it. <laughs> and then sued him. And then sued him for sexual harassment. <laughs> I'm not you saying you should in. jerk off in front of people. I'm just saying that if someone Does starts anybody... doing that, you can leave. Just like when you're on the subway and like a random homeless dude pulls his balls out, you just. No, listen. Move a seat down. It's not, it's not even no that. HR department it's, on the subway. It's way worse to just start whipping it out and jerking it. He, but like if Jake looked at me dead in the eye and goes, I'm about to do this. You have five hey, minutes. <laughs> I'm going to pull my dick out and start jerking off. You can stay in here if you want. That gives me ample opportunity to go. All right. That makes it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're I'm a out. willing yeah. participant. Then. This is yeah. the, the, the most intriguing thing about all of these situations is when I hear that, and how many times have you heard this? You, uh, uh, people listening to this, and the two of you sitting here in the room with me, we've all heard this, and we've all wondered how. And this is the thing 
How, how did this happen? Wait, what? Why sense. would anybody do that? <laughs> I walked into his office and he exposed himself to me. Right. Okay. Let's just break this down. Think about this. In what world? And I, I, I would just love to be a fly on the wall. And I got and a promotion these, for six months before no, it yeah. helped me. Just, they paid me fifty-two I, just, million it, it's dollars. Just a, no, no, it, movie. It, it's not. It's not the victim who mm. I'm concerned about. It is the individual doing it. I, I just don't. I can't wrap my head around it. I guess that's just the nature of a sexual predator to do weird shit like that. Mm. But I've just never in a million years, like ever, could even fathom having somebody standing in front of me and then just being like, pulling my penis out. It's just such, it's, it's such an extreme it's, version of, of just entitlement. Like, what do you mean expose yourself? Like you yeah. took a shirt off? Okay. Yeah. Like, Hey, let me show you what I'm working with. I you got a six, who, you know, I got a six pack or something. No, no, no. These babies haven't you know, seen a carbs you know, and so too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You pulled wiping your, your mouth for no reason. <laughs> like we can all at, like a tucked in shirt. I've never done that. It, 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 <laughs> I think it's pretty common knowledge that I pretty, sh it's pretty common knowledge. Now this is a statistic. 83%. 86. Yep. 86. 86%. 86 <laughs> of women, 86% of women, 86% <laughs> of women do not think like a penis is attractive. Oh no. no. Like like w women have like I've I've I have never it's ever not. met a woman in my whole life who's ever said like I am very attracted Send me a dick to a penis. <laughs> yeah, they, don't think, they don't think it's attractive. This is the, the way body, I look at it. The, your if body, a girl asks your you mind, dick, your body, black your mind, yeah. your humor, your abs, your back. Your thighs. There are things. Oh, that guy's ass, right? We, they've all said things about a guy, but I've never ever heard any woman ever Listen. talk about another guy's like, huh. oh, just the most amazing penis I've ever seen. And maybe they do behind closed door. Maybe I just don't I've, have an amazing. Maybe it's me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's me. <laughs> I've heard it once. But, <laughs> but I, I look at it like this the dick is a chisel. You don't <laughs> admire the chisel. You admire the marble. Oh, that's good. The work. And the women are the marble. <laughs> it's definitely different. Like, Why is it that I, every but, statue that you look at, it's just like this gorgeous fucking woman or like a painting. It's like, oh, the female form is pure beauty. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Everything we're about gross. it. Yes. Yeah, Dudes are gross. gross. We have yeah. What is holes. accentuated <laughs> in male statues? Uh, the upper body. Muscles genuinely? and Muscle, violence. Yeah. yeah, muscles and violence. Yeah. thinking. Yeah, the thinking. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What's accentuated in feminine statues and paintings? The labias. Beauty. Oh. oh in wow, labias. That was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say hips. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I, I've just always I've always wondered. It just goes back to like right, there there is a moment in like between a man standing in front of a woman, like if these things really happened, that when when she goes, I walked in and he exposed himself. I'm yeah. like, what's great? what led up to that? He just what's, like looked you in the eyes and said, Hey, welcome to my office. I know you're usually in here for like an evaluation report. But let me but show you my today, balls. Today <laughs> I'm gonna pull my dick out. It's, <laughs> it's like, my, my, gonna, my favorite part is gonna... the pro the thought process that has to go through. You're staring at that coworker, <laughs> right, or the subordinate, and you just go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. You're not gonna say shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my balls. <laughs> I'm gonna show you my the, balls. It's it's not to like, like, like. I feel like I feel like we're gonna get hammered for like victim blaming. Mm. I understand like how <laughs> it's your fault, especially women, right? You're in a position where there's someone who's physically bigger than right. you. There's a, there's an intimidation factor. There's also like a lot of sociology that goes into play there. Like Carry a, a gun. Lot of, a lot of rape victims say yeah. that they just wanted this situation to end, over, and it yeah. was like they're of just, course. Yeah. They're I'm not. To, I'm not saying like, I get it. But like the a, only a man one who of those, forces men are more powerful than women. Yeah, and it's just, physical, it's just a felt physically more powerful. They get on top. Thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. I get it. I the totally only one understand of those guys that. I'm not that I ever for a second was like you're a full on fucking creepy because even Harvey Weinstein is like you the. Victims Slimy. were pretty involved, you know? Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow had a great career yeah. after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brokaw is the one I think is the creepiest. Do you know Tom Brokaw? Yeah. Deal? He had a secret button. I don't know the deal. But. Dude, he had, so when you came into his office, he had a secret oh. button under his desk that would oh. close the door and lock it. <laughs> That's awesome. That. That. Harvey Weinstein <laughs> seems like the dude that did it with the door open. Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, no, Tom he Brokaw told everybody like, in the hotel. Going dude. Anywhere. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein's the guy at dinner going, I'm going to fuck yeah. this girl. But like, how much Harvey Weinstein's the guy that gets slammed for it, and Tom Brokaw? No it's because he got caught. No one, no one talks about Tom Brokaw at all. You know, he's mm. just like such a trusted voice in the media for so long, and like, yeah. 
yeah. have an auto lock on his door and we're just gonna because yep. I don't even think anyone came out and said like I don't think there was like a trail of victims that went after Tom Brokaw. No. It was just like a rumor mill that came out and was like, oh yeah, Tom had a button under his desk that would close and lock the door. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. Nobody, That's way more than quid quid pro quo, which was more Harvey Weinstein's vibe. Yeah. You want to be the next biggest star in the world? Yeah. Move this walker out the way and see what I'm swinging over here. You know? Yeah. But Tom Brokaw was like, I'm not going fucking nowhere. <laughs> That's way worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, and then, and then, um, um, uh, oh, how did I forget his name? America's favorite dad that put Benadryl in everyone's drinks. Oh, oh. Cosby. Cosby, yeah. Because there was like the, there was the argument that was like, well, why did you go to the hotel room with Bill Cosby? That's kind of weird out of the... Which is, I agree. It's hard to say you no think when you're asleep. <laughs> yeah, no woman I mean, has ever found a, a naked man super attractive. No woman yeah. has ever looked at Bill Cosby and been like, hell, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, if you went to his hotel never... room, I would not have taken a drink from him. That, no. That's a weird sweater. It's it a just weird seems personality. like pretty common sense to me that if... Like a an adult married man invites you back to his hotel room. Nothing good is coming here. It's like when you're when you're younger. Why, your why would are you? Like, why would you even? Nothing good happens after ten p.m. Yeah. Nothing good happens in someone's hotel room. No. Why no. Are you? No. Why would you? You're a willing participant at some don't, point. No. Don't do this. Yeah. If it's an, unless you're like a like you're at all that being said, shot though, show for example. I'm like we got a bunch of luggage here. It's got to go downstairs, and there's some females in your. You know, and your cohort, in your luggage? like I need, <laughs> I need help to bring all this downstairs, and it's one o'clock in the afternoon, and there's fifteen other guys with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if you're like, hey, it's eleven o'clock, you want to go finish this conversation in my hotel room? Yeah, but and you then you get up there, and then he pulls into. his dick out. You're yeah. like, yeah, what do you think was going to happen? I, I will say, I will. I feel like I need to retract some of what I just said though, because if Bill Cosby asked me to go get fucking plowed with him, I would probably take that up. Wouldn't yeah. you want to get drunk with Bill Cosby? Wait, was this before or after? <laughs> yeah, would you Maybe do? still. It just seems like an interesting story. What is Bill Cosby like? Seventeen margaritas. Yeah. In? Like, I want to know. I want to know what, what, what I'm getting into like. up here. What's yeah. an Uber ride with Bill Cosby after some tequila shots, man? <laughs> Anyways, anyways, that is the majority of everything that we wanted to talk about. That's all Anything I got. Closing for you today. thoughts? No closing thoughts. I already said them. Okay. And with that, we bid the Aquave. Hey, but wait, wait, time. wait. Do you want to do you wanna do you wanna redo a non botched intro? No, I kinda liked it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> just just keep it. Yeah. Organic. Can you at least cut it up on the dumb parts? Maybe. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs>